Hi, my name is Jana McCants, and I am joining you guys here today at the McCall Center, and we are going to be doing our mini art lab. So um, my name is Jana McCants. Like I said earlier, I work a lot with the medium of collage and paint, and I use a very interesting canvas, which is actually a vinyl record. So um, I've been doing this for quite a while and I just thoroughly enjoyed it. So I just wanted to share my gift with you guys. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. The main things um, that you're gonna need for the workshop are of course, a vinyl record. Um, I tend to work with acrylic paint, um, but if you're someone that's into oils, that's completely on, on you. Uh, but I love acrylic paint just because it dries quick and it allows me to get through the process a lot faster. Um, if you're someone that's, you know, Wanting to do more collage pieces, you're definitely gonna need a pair of scissors um, as well as an X-Acto knife and pad. And unfortunately I can't pull up my pad here, but you guys will see it as I'm demoing today. Um, so yeah, I think the first thing is figuring out what are we gonna create? So I think the biggest part of my job as an artist is to figure out you know, what kind of conversation am I gonna make? So um, one of the lovely tools that I love to um, create my concepts with, and it's definitely something that has helped me throughout my career is using my lovely iPad and the app called Procreate. So um, this is something that is completely optional. It's just something that kind of helps me as an artist to pretty much conceptualize things before I start, you know, of course, painting on my vinyl. So um, I just use the process to, um, pretty much come up with how am I going to paint the record? What kind of imagery am I going to need? And that is something that you definitely can download on any iPad, iPhone, Android device. Um, and it's, it's just a fabulous tool that I love to use. Let's get into this. Like I said, let's go ahead and get into this thing. Um, I'm gonna be pretty much referencing my mock-up here on the Procreate app. So what I'll do is kind of flash it for a quick second so you guys know where I'm headed. And then we'll dive into the actual vinyl process. Like I said, this is something that is completely optional. Um, it just helps me find my images and helps me develop my concept. But I'm just gonna slightly walk you guys through on how I pretty much layered my imagery and then we'll get into the vinyl record. So let's get started. The main thing that I do when I start to figure out, you know, what images I'm looking for, of course, try to find the main subjects. So I really looked at some awesome images of the original Temptations, and I just love this image, so I definitely included it. Um, just one helpful tip, I am holding my Apple Pencil, so that kind of helped me get into the creases as far as erasing the backgrounds. Um, and of course, I'll be doing that in, in person with my collage, like cutting it out, but the Apple Pencil helps out a lot with that. Um, so I, then again, I found my images. The next thing I thought about was, okay, what record do I want to have featured? So if you actually ever went onto the internet and found, um, and just researched vinyl labels for certain artists, you'll find that a bunch of them come up. So this was one that has all of their awesome hits on it. We have The Way You Do The Things You Do, um, Ain't Too Proud Your Bag, uh, Get Ready, all of their classic hits. So as I was looking at the label, I kind of just thought about, you know, the main element of them seen on the old traditional microphone. So I added that into it. And then the next thing I added was this heart. <laughs> so a uh, part of me when I am doing these vinyl records is I'm really listening for how the music makes me feel. And a lot of the songs include love or heartbreak, talking about getting back with the girl. So I thought about adding this lovely heart with the lightning bolt going through it, just because their music is so strong and powerful and it kind of stands the test of time. So that's kind of where the concept came from. So let's go ahead and get into this. All right, so I went in, got all of my images. I print them out on cardstock. Um, traditional printer paper works too, but cardstock, I just like it because it just feels a little bit thicker. So I went ahead and printed out all of my important elements and I'm gonna paint the star, I mean the heart up here, okay? So let me go ahead and get into this. Cut this sucker out. I'm just gonna use scissors for this part. Center. All right, 
Now this uh, microphone has a little bit of like grooves going and I'm gonna kind of cut them slightly for the sake of time, but you can get as in fine tune with the details as you like. Um, one thing I'll definitely recommend is if you are someone like me and loves to use an exacto knife, that is also something that's super helpful. So I kind of show you guys how I use that knife to get the really nice precise cuts. We got our microphone. See, I still see some edges on there. I don't really like, so I'm gonna cut that with the exacto real quick. Let's see. Bam. And I'm actually gonna even for this one, I'm gonna pretty much take out that center. Circle as well. Damn. And usually while I'm cutting, what I like to do is sometimes paint over it if I need to, but actually I don't think I need to. Yeah, we're good. And I actually gotta cut out the guy. So let's make sure that's in the frame. So I have a lot of twists and turns. So the original image I had um, already taken it. And I just, I had saved this as a PNG file and cut it out. Um, the reason I love to use this exacto knife is because it really just helps you get those details the way that you want it. So like parts like this, like in between the arms, it's really, really good for stuff like that. Let me put that out and bam, see that difference right there versus, you know, that white background won't be there. So it also has a spot in between here. Have to worry about being super perfect, just trying to get most of the details is all that's important. And if you are somebody that's going to use an exacto knife, please swatch for your fingers. Definitely make sure you're cutting on a matte surface. If you exact on knife tips, try never to have your hand behind the knife because you do not want to cut your hand. So we try to keep your hand above wherever you're cutting. Even if you got to turn the paper, you see I'm turning the paper a whole lot here. I want to make sure my left hand does not catch a boo-boo. Trust me, it has happened. <laughs> Taking it in very, very small sections is one thing I highly recommend. There's a few more. It's a very intricate piece right here. It's where all the hard work happens. <laughs> start gluing at this point. So the next part of it all is just to go ahead and glue it down, making sure everything is the way I like it on here. So I think go kind of like that, yep. And pretty much just take it in layers. Um, the one cool reason I like to sketch it out is just so that way you know how to layer certain things. So, you know, like this has to be in the background, this has to be on top of that, and then that has to be on top of that. So it just kind of helps the process out a little bit. But if you want to go, you know, 
just do it however you like. That is perfectly fine too. And then just apply it. And, uh, traditional Elmer's glue stick is perfectly fine. Um, if you want to go a little bit fancier, you can get some spray adhesive. That stuff works. Miracles. Just make sure you get yourself a nice thick coat. I use a million glue sticks <laughs> throughout this process. Down here, that looks about right. And don't get scared if a little bit of purple shows through, it dries clear <laughs> if you have an Elm's purple glue stick. All right, there and now, just like that. And then I had an old school fashioned mic because I feel like it just represents that time period. Otis's hand too much. There we go. Baby's coming to life. All right, and then the big issue is once you have pretty much layered on in your images, you might find that some of it's hanging off. <laughs> so you definitely, definitely need to cut that off. So just take a pair of scissors and Right along the edge of that right there. Bam. Right there, it looks gorgeous. And then the last part was our lovely heart. So along with my painting, like you know, along with my collage, I love to be painting as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit of paint set up here real quick. Just go ahead and knock it out and let it go. Awesome. I kind of get that make that color there. color mixing, which is always, always fun. Yes, yeah, perfect, because I want it to match that color there. So I think that's pretty good, somewhat close to it. All right, so I'm gonna start off painting my heart over here in the corner. Can you feel my reference image? Because I crack it sometimes. And one thing about the paint, as you guys can see, you might need to do a few layers. Um, that's why I like working with acrylic. It's because it dries quick, so I can go ahead and get those layers on in. So I'm trying to get this heart as perfect as possible. And I feel like my heart never comes out right on the <laughs> both sides. Like one side is loppy. The other side, there we go. It's a little bit rough. It's looking a little rough right there. All right. And for the sake of the process, I'm actually going to fan this baby real quick. So if you are somebody that's like me and likes to move really quick, you can either use a blow dryer or you can fan it and that'll help it dry a little bit quicker. Fan it down. I meant to bring my blow dryer, but I forgot. <laughs> I think it's, I should be able to add the next layer. 
layer without it clumping. And, and then the last part is going to be the lightning bolt. So I'm just going to fan this, try to get it to dry a little bit quicker because I got to get that lightning bolt to go right through the center of the heart. I'm going to start off with a little bit of white as the base for that one. Let's see how I did this. Left. So this one, and then it goes that way. I'm going to let that dry for a little bit longer. And then we'll go in and add the layer. So I added the white layer um, just because I'm gonna be dealing with yellow and that tends to mix really nasty. So I like to have a white base layer. So I'm gonna keep trying to go over this red until it starts to get a little bit lighter. In the way that I want it to be. And also another cool fan trick, if you don't want to fan the paper over it, just fan the vinyl. <laughs> that works too, make sure you don't knock down any water or anything. <laughs> Let's see, trying to move fast. It's actually almost there. Start adding yellow up here to see what it looks like. Yellow is kind of popping. <laughs>
This is terrible without brushing it. <laughs> but it's gonna be okay. Now I'm gonna edit the edges real quick. Not thin at all. I will fix it later. And then this is other chick who does vinyl. She does like a pink head. It's so cool. <laughs> I need to find where she gets them from. I think we're all set. It's looking all right. Is it in focus? So, so. all right. Try. Add a little bit more layers to this over here. All right. I think that's it. Bam. <laughs> so we went from this baby, which is nothing else in the way. All right. So we did. That, does that look pretty accurate, y'all? Oh, you think so? Not too bad. <laughs> of course, it needs to be straightened up a little bit, but I think it looks pretty good. I think we did all right. And just kind of, you know, bring it up a little bit closer so they can see if it stays in focus. I don't know if it's going to stay in focus, but there we go. All right, you guys. Well, that is pretty much the steps to basically getting started to create your own vinyl record. Um, just think about, you know, whatever music artist you love and then just go for it, you guys. Um, have so much fun with it. Paint with it, collage on it, add words, text. You can do so many awesome things with these vinyls. Um, so again, thank you guys for joining me so much. I do want to share my website with you guys just in case you want to look at any of my other vinyl creations. So if you guys are interested in following me, um, my website is www.jvinylart.com. Um, and here I feature a lot of my artworks here. Most of a lot of them have been sold. I do a plethora of things from um, paintings, posters, and then as well as my latest creation has been bad. So I have a whole lot going on, on the website. And you also can follow me on Instagram, which is jvinylart. And yeah, I think that is it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you to the McCall Center for allowing me to do this with you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy it and have a great day.